I am super excited to have somebody coming on stage right now to talk to us about endpoint security. And this is Oliver Bending, the CEO of Matrix 42. He is responsible for a workspace management system. That means specifically it's software to make your work more effective and at the same time more secure. And his focus today is endpoint security in a complex world. So please help me welcome today Oliver Bendig. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, endpoint security in a VUCA world. What VUCA stands for, I will explain during my speech. But uh, welcome and, and thanks for joining um, and a nice introduction. Um, so we have seen Deutsche Telekom uh, here. We have uh, seen other big brands on the stage, I guess, that um, when had no need to introduce themselves. But by the show of hands, uh, for curiosity reasons, who knows Matrix 42? A few. So a little advertisement, uh, real brief about me. Why am I talking about endpoint security um, in a VUCA world and why I'm, am I staying on this uh, stage? So I personally, I'm involved in end user computing and workspace and uh, um, the ability to provide better management for workspaces in an organization that keeps me awake at night for almost 20 years now. Um, so I'm uh, heading up a, a group at Matrix 42 and the whole team at Matrix 42 that is focused around simplifying digital work. So about Matrix 42, um, so who are we and what are we doing? So we are actually a German-based uh, software vendor that is completely focused on the user's workspace. And to do, actually, a, we do a couple of things on this workspace. Number one is uh, we help to automate and to optimize the user's workspace to make users uh, more productive, to get work done. Uh, the second thing uh, that we do is we help to optimize processes uh, in terms of service management, um, in terms of uh, self-service capabilities so that a user can uh, purchase uh, services from IT on any kind of device. And the third thing is. Um, about optimizing licenses and, and software asset management. I will touch on that briefly later on as well. But the main topic of this speech today is about security, right? So because we believe that it should not be a conflict between end user productivity and security. Both uh, can go hand in hand. So we can provide secure workspaces, but still make the user uh, productive. So uh, as I mentioned, we are completely focused on digital work. So that means for us devices, applications, services and processes. So we help to optimize those and make them uh, more securely. But one thing why we're also here um, uh, on this stage today is because we have announced acquisi actually an acquisition yesterday of a company called Ego Secure. And the reason why this is important for us, for our customers, for our partners, and our strategy is pretty simple. Because Matrix 42, we are 25 years experienced in optimizing, automating end-user workspaces, the ability to deploy applications, software, operating systems uh, on devices, and uh, also to optimize and automate uh, processes in terms of service management. And Ego Secure is actually a vendor who is uh, focused for uh, 13 years now on endpoint security in detail. What that basically means is encryption, application control, device control, the ability to secure the endpoint, especially uh, also peripherals like uh, a USB stick and a, and, a, and a hard drive management, but I will touch on that later on. So the main topic of this speech is endpoint security in a VUCA world. And what this basically means is that every time when we talk to our clients, and we have more than now 4,500 customers with this combined offering in total as, as clients worldwide, there's one thing that I always hear from CIOs and CISOs in this world which is the digital transformation is evolving faster than security know-how. So what this basically means is that every business is nowadays a digital business, whether you're in healthcare, in production, um, or even uh, in uh, any kind of waste disposal business, which is also a business where we have a, a few customers. Every business is nowadays a digital business. And digital business need um, more security. And this uh, guy here, nailed it actually in one of his first books. Uh, he actually mentioned uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, quotes. He was basically saying that if the change uh, on the outside is happening faster than on the inside, the end is inside. 
And this is how we also look on, on workspace management because of a simple thing. If uh, we look at our uh, customers, one thing that we see is that more and more devices are used to get work done. A few years ago, it was a one-to-one -one relationship between uh, user and device. But fast forward to today, we all know it's a one-to-end relationship. Uh, best case, you have two devices to get work done. But in my world, for instance, I'm using five devices to, to get work done, whether it's a watch uh, that I'm using for notifications, whether it's my iPad, my iPhone, or my uh, laptop. So um, that's obviously we want to provide more flexibility to our users, that they are more productive to get work done, work anywhere, anytime, on any device. But there comes a risk with it. And that risk actually means that there's new gateways for, yeah, actually data exfiltration and malware to be infiltrated. So there's more, more uh, attack vectors actually uh, on those devices. So it's two elements that we hear all the time from our clients, what we need to protect in terms of security. Number one is we need to protect customers from ransomware attacks. Yeah, it's a big business. Uh, ransomware, as you probably all know, is a business that already works like a, a, let's say, a traditional business where you have marketing campaigns about ransomware, right? where actually attackers create uh, campaigns uh, uh, around ransomware and roll it out into the environment. But um, and more, almost more interesting piece is the data loss, by intention or, or not by intention, so that users are actually using technology or using their devices to get work done, and somehow malicious code um, is on that device and, and is actually exfiltrating um, uh, data. So a few six examples that we've seen in the wild. And uh, I hope you can uh, read this as a few examples from 2014, 15, 16, etc. cetera. Um, things like webcam hack, right, where um, hackers had the ability or achieved the ability to take over uh, webcams and actually spy what is happening in an environment. Uh, that's a... Uh, um, was an interesting uh, scenario. But one thing that was even more concerning, if you look at the IoT use cases, the Jeep SUV hack, some of you might have heard about it, uh, where hackers have actually um, achieved the, the capability to do a remote control of uh, SUV trucks, which is very concerning, right, if somebody has the ability to remote control your car. But even uh, more funnier things like the toy hacking, where a hacker controlled uh, Furbies and used Barbie puppets, uh, puppets for spying. Again, a spying um, attack, which uh, uh, is and was very concerning. Uh, up to WannaCry and, and NoPetya, yeah, we have heard this on this stage uh, before, it was a big, big campaign out there, a hacker campaign, actually, and that hit us many, many customers. So one thing is for sure, it needs protection. And the last example here also shows that it's not just about ransomware protection, it's also about uh, data loss prevention. Because the last one is called here uh, Vipatissimo. It's, it's maybe a funny one, and some of you might think, so why is it, a, is it difficult if somebody is hacking a, ha a sex toy, right? But it's not about the sex toy and hacking the sex toy, it's about the data, right? That user data was actually uh, captured and thieved uh, from that vendor that creates that sex toy. And that uh, was actually a, uh, a big problem because more than 100,000 uh, customer data entries was, were actually uh, thieved. So where I want to lead to of this speech is we are living now in a VUCA world. And VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And this term is actually not from me or from Matrix 42. It's a term that got defined uh, during combat in the 90s from the US military. And the reason why I like this analogy is not because of combat and war, because it is somehow a war that we have against the attackers and the bad guys out there. The reason why I like this term is it um, describes exactly what we see currently in customer environments. Um, because also in combat, the idea and the rationality behind this concept was that every situation is different. Basically meaning things that I've learned in the past, I cannot automatically use to use uh, that pattern and that experience from the past to use it in the future. And if you look at it from an endpoint security perspective, one thing that we are seeing is, um, first, the world is, um, the world is mobile, right? Um, you don't need me talking about this and telling you that the world is more mobile, but it creates new complexity out there, a new level of protection that is needed. The second thing is the world is connected. 
in terms of cloud and IoT, and again, talking about data breaches and data loss prevention, it was never as easy as of today to put data into my personal Dropbox or my personal Box account or Google Drive account, and the data is gone. So obviously, that it needs some protection on the device in terms of data loss prevention. And the one thing that we also see and hear from our customers that the world is intelligent, right? Um, also, the bad guys are using artificial intelligence and machine learning to attack uh, the endpoints. Um, so one thing is clear, the world is under attack. So it needs, it needs another level of protection. So why is it so important for the endpoint? If you look at folks uh, and data from IDC, is they came up with a recent report that said 70% of all malware outbreaks and attacks actually originate at the endpoint, which basically means the endpoint needs um, a certain or actually a very uh, focused uh, view in terms of um, protection. And what's our, what is our natural response when we want to protect something? We build higher walls, right? More firewalling, um, better antivirus, uh, more higher, thicker walls around our workspace. We believe at Matrix 42, this is actually a concept that will not work out. Because there are smarter ways on how you can protect the workspace. And I want to run you through that. Because we believe it's not the way that the right way to protect an endpoint is not to ask about anymore, are you a bad guy or, no, or not? Do I know you in terms of an, a traditional antivirus, which is pattern-based, that you have uh, fingerprints, uh, file name, any kind of data that I know about a virus or malware, and then I can identify, uh, are you a bad guy or a good guy? It's more about what is the actual um, process or application doing on the device. So I ask much more the question, what do you want to do on the device rather than who are you? And we believe this is a much better concept because um, shutting somebody out means you lose productivity. So a world without security flaws is, uh, we all know, impossible. But when you do things like this, that you check actually at the time when something bad is happening on the device, then you do the isolation. That's a much smarter way. To give you a concrete example, we had on the slide uh, uh, things like WannaCry, right? And WannaCry somehow happened to um, actually get installed on a lot of devices, most, uh, mostly through the internet or through uh, email, right? Somebody clicked actually on a, um, on a link or on an attachment. And when WannaCry actually even passed some of the traditional AV in the early days and used some of the exploits in the operating system to break out, uh, it passed traditional antivirus. So we believe a much better way is actually if you have some technology on the endpoint that is analyzing what is, what is WannaCry, what does WannaCry actually want to do on the endpoint. So in that specific case, WannaCry opened actually different processes, wanted to in, uh, encrypt operating system files and data. And that is the time when a solution like ours, where our solution actually is checking and say, well, who are you? I don't know you as a process. You're not authorized. I isolate you in, in real time. That's exactly what we are doing. So if you look at the process, what we traditionally see in terms of security in a custom environment, it looks pretty much like this. You have monitoring, you have detection, uh, you have to enrich the data that you capture on endpoints, you have to validate the data, is this a good guy or bad guy? Um, you then escalate it to maybe the security team or service management team to solve it, and then you block actually access and uh, you search the environment if somebody else has the same security threat. Um, and then you remediate uh, the endpoint. So in terms of what we do um, um, uh, to automate this process is we provide a solution that simplifies this and automates this as best as possible. So we capture the data, yes. We automatically identify what is happening on the endpoint. And we automatically provide uh, then resolutions and remediation. So what could a resolution and remediation be? So think about a use case that uh, again, with my example, WannaCry pops up in one of your users' endpoints, and it opens up a security incident. And frankly, yes, it creates an alert. But what you probably want to do, you want to have immediate actions in terms of remediation. And what is the remediation? Quarantine network. Put the device somewhere where it cannot do any harm. Second action could be install anything, right? Install an update, install a patch, reinstall the machine. So that's uh, automatic remediation. and. Uh, the, uh, the fourth element could be actually really to reinstall the whole system and to put it out of the, uh, the network. So if you look at the time that typically a security attack 
um, sits on a device, the dwell time, we call it. Uh, it moved from 120 days to 99 days until actually uh, a security or bad guy breaks out on, on the endpoint. But the contain time in terms of the breakout is 15 days, but the business app impact is five days. And we've experienced this with customers that were not using our solution, that they were for many days, for four or five days, completely out of production because they had no uh, proper endpoint protection. So how do we believe endpoint security should play in concert um, with all these uh, other elements? Number one is the analogy that I use quite often to explain this to our customers is a car. Because if you look at a car, it also provides you security. Security is the brake, traditional brake, right? But um, secure can, can also be a business innovator. If you look at the car, it's uh, more about the EBS, ESP, EBD, all these systems that all way also provide you protection and more security in the car, but it helps you also to steer the car better and to drive down the road much more efficient. And that's the way how we see also security on the endpoint. We believe there should not be a compromise between end user productivity and security on the endpoint. So how do you achieve that? So a picture that um, virtually we see in many customer environments is like this. You have endpoint management. You worked on uh, managing and automating the device, client management, PC, laptops, uh, MacBooks, etc. But also in terms of uh, enterprise mobility, the mobile devices. But the challenge is um, that if you use this as a silo, right, and you have endpoint security as a silo to your rest of the management stack, it looks much more like this. It does not play well together. Right? There is a broken process. And broken processes create frustrated users. And we believe that there is a much smarter way of doing this. So let me run you through this. The first thing that we recommend to customers is, please do not differentiate anymore between PCs, laptops, and mobile devices. Because it's not a question anymore uh, which device is Oliver Bendig using. The question is more what kind of service, what kind of application is he using on the device. So provide it, please, automatically in the right form factor on the right device, and please provide it securely. So you should combine this. But the journey just starts here. Because if you want to have security not bolted on, you want to have it built in, that basically means you need a solution that integrates uh, client management and enterprise mobility with endpoint security, but also with service management. So why is that important, we believe? Because only a managed device is a truly secure device. So if you have uh, complete control about the applications, about the data, about the configuration that is happening on the device, you can provide much more and much better uh, security. But it also does not end there with security. We believe, again, the data that we capture on the device is something that we can use in processes like service management to automatically trigger installations and uh, uh, remediation processes. And this picture, from a high-level perspective, describes it quite well. What we hear from our customers at the moment is that cybersecurity, specifically endpoint security, and service management and operations, they belong together, and they continue to merge. Um, and again, to run you through a concrete example, if you have a security attack on the device or, for instance, a data breach on the device that Oliver is typically downloading 50 megabytes of data from a server per day. And on one day, um, I'm downloading 10 gigabyte. That's very suspicious behavior, because typically I do only download 50 megabytes. So that is an alerting that should automatically feed an orchestration system service management that by a scoring, a figure between 0 and 100, automatic remediation action should be executed. So for instance, that 10 gigabyte uh, traffic creates an alert within the service management and IT operation systems and triggers, uh, for instance, an alert for IT to have a look at it, or the security guys, or even cuts off um, network connectivity or um, a, a sends their device in quarantine because it's a suspicious behavior. So to summarize this from a security perspective and the solutions that we provide, we call this always the endpoint security sandwich. Because we believe, um, and I hope the, the first couple of slides have explained this, that you should see the workspace as a whole. And it's a layered approach. So the first layer that needs protection is the device itself, client management, enterprise mobility. 
The second layer is patch management. It sounds weird because it's a cleanup exercise. Uh, typically, every customer should have this under control, but it's still a big challenge. Are your devices really patched with the latest patch level to avoid uh, exploits and zero-day exploits? So uh, OS and application patch management. Based on that layer, you should um, take care of your applications and your data that sits on the device. Why is this important? Because only managed applications are truly secure applications, we believe. If a user can somehow find a way to install an application on his or her device, it is, again, another uh, vector of uh, attack um, for the bad guys on entry point. And on top of that, there's pre-infection uh, uh, solutions, like uh, traditional antivirus or next-gen antivirus. Uh, so we provide this with partner solutions, but obviously there is still a need for it. And, and traditional AV, even if we know that uh, almost 60% uh, of uh, actually malicious code can pass traditional AV nowadays, it's like washing your hands, right? It's, uh, you do this still, it's a cleanup exercise, you still have to do it, and, and that's how we, we see it. But um, if we stick to that analogy by washing the hands, the, the actually the uh, the remediation of penicillin in, in that case is post-infection protection, or how Gardner calls it, endpoint detection and response. So the ability to have um, an agent on the device that controls network traffic, that controls application traffic, and that can automatically isolate the bad guys in real time. So again, to repeat myself, we are not asking anymore, who are you, uh, dear Mr. Process? We are actually asking, what do you want to do on the device? And if it sounds, smells, and feels malicious and not legitimate, we're actually um, isolating it in real time. But when we have control and management and security of the device, application, and data, there's still one thing that is challenging, which is the user. And the user has access to uh, devices, USB sticks, but also to applications. And one thing where we believe uh, what is also necessary to protect is identity. So the ability to provide secure access to applications and to control this um, in real time is very important. Again, a concrete example. So if Oliver Bending is exiting Salesforce.com, maybe in Hanova right now, and two minutes later in Moscow, in Russia, somehow that sounds and smells strange. Um, so that is suspicious behavior. And that needs then more um, a review and more data. But again, where I want to lead you guys to is all this information and data, if you protect the different layers of the endpoint, that should be fed into service management, IT service management, and uh, automation with workflow. So then you have truly prevention and protection of the complete endpoint. So at Matrix 42, what do we provide here? We have a, what I call a Lego type of product architecture where you have five key elements. Number one is um, um, that you see on the, the left side here, we protect and manage the endpoint by automatically uh, deploying software and operating systems on that endpoint. But we also uh, include that management capability into service management. Um, but we also take care of costs and of licenses, of assets and contracts. Why is this important? If, for instance, an endpoint is managed and is broken, um, you probably want to have a look at it if the contract is really a new one or is it an old contract because it might make sense to throw away, the, uh, throw away the device sometimes and replace the device with a new device rather than trying to fixing it, right? But last but not least, and that's the reason why I have this speech here today, is about security, right? And I touched on that already. So the portfolio that we provide, and we're happy to show you more um, uh, at our booth, is a, a modular approach where you provide the process automation the device management and device automation together with endpoint detection response and endpoint security. And specific, specifically, the IT security piece um, on the lower end is here very important because we have the ability to control uh, uh, also uh, USB sticks, USB drives. Um, X, um, uh, we also manage uh, encryption and decryption of data, which helps you again to protect from data breaches. So um, there's a different modules that we provide um, that you can have a look at in terms of uh, securing the audit, uh, access control, application control, etc., cetera, um, available on uh, many devices. And this is like a screenshot how that uh, looks like. But as key takeaways from this speech, there's actually three things that I want you to take away. 
So first of all, when you look at the endpoint, unfortunately, what you've done in the last 15, maybe 20 years on managing PC, laptops, and server systems um, is not uh, automatically a way going forward, right? Because the world is changing out there with this notion of mobile, this notion of IoT, different devices that are entering the workspace. And the second thing is, please do not follow a siloed approach. Because if you invest in um, security products on the endpoint, whether it's AV, next-gen AV, post-infection protection, or um, uh, encryption uh, capabilities, that is only one piece of the puzzle, typically. So that needs to play in concert, especially when you want to create additional automation. Because if you feed that into a um, comprehensive service management system, you can actually provide automatic remediation. We believe this is very powerful, because unfortunately, the bad guys out there, they are very, very fast. Uh, so we need to be fast from a corporate IT and security perspective as well. And last but not least, and that's the advertisement part, so we provide a very unique solution um, that provides this end-to-end -end management and security. Because again, we believe that only a managed endpoint is a secure, secure endpoint. So the good news, there is remediation. But the bad news is um, it's not easy. But it can be easy if you um, work with the right solution. We are happy to talk about, about it with you, how you can avoid such an uh, experience. Um, so on the road to success, there are no shortcuts, but there is an easy button, and that easy button is Matrix 42. So thank you very much. Oliver, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you have a moment, yep. uh, would it be OK to ask you a of course. couple of questions? Maybe we have a few people that uh, still have questions for you. I want to get started maybe with a, a brief question. Um, can you give us an example of a security culture measurement to improve your business or our business anyways? So security culture? Yeah. So yeah. the culture around security. Yeah. So first of all, we all know that, and I, I touched this in my speech, that the endpoint um, is most of the time the origination of a security attack. So what, need, what kind of security culture do you need? You need to actually educate your people, your employees, to be careful what they're doing, besides all the technology. Because a lot of time, it's by a click of a button, you have any kind of data breaches, or you have ransomware attacks that can be avoided if you train your people that this is probably not the right behavior of doing it. So training in terms of what is legitimate actions and what are actually difficult actions is something that is very important. So we also help customers to educate their employees. Uh, so that's uh, very important. So how do you, just to follow up on this, how do you mm -hmm. make sure that at the same time you're not, you're not building anxiety into your company, which, is, which would be harmful, right? So people don't actually click anymore. Yeah. Obviously, when you, when you look at our solution, and that's the beauty of it, when you have good protection, uh, especially the thing that I touched on post-protection infection, that we accept the fact that something will happen on device, you have a kind of insurance for your users, right? It, a little pop-up comes up and says, actually, that smells like a security attack. Uh, um, we automatically have escalated this to IT or to security. So that gives confidence, because it's like an like in insurance. Um, but one thing that is very important for us, and I wanted to touch on that during my speech as well, is that productivity and security, they should not stay in conflict. Because I see this like a slider. On the one side, you have security. On the one side, you have productivity and flexibility of your users. But what I see a lot of in, in custom environments is you do focus a lot of on security, long passwords, uh, very restriction in terms of flexible work style. So then you have a high level of security, but somehow a digital, a digital suicide. Yeah? But your users are very frustrated. So on the one side, you need to train your users what is good actions, what are bad actions, where have to, you have to be careful. But on the other side, it's important to implement clever technology and smart technology that you are ahead of the curve against the, uh, the bad guys. Thank yeah? you, Oliver. OK. Let's see if we have an audience question. If you're curious, if there's anything you always wanted to know or that's been bugging you. If not, we'll move right on. Thank you. Well, Thank thanks you very lot. much. Thanks Thank a lot. you, guys.